We are learning today Le'ilu Nishmas, Rabbi Yosef ben Yamin ben Rabbi Nasha Kaltman, and Le'ilu Nishmas Yehuda ben Sturi. This is a uh, long sicha, but it is very gishmak and it's uh, very structured. So we're going to do it the best we can to move quickly, not to take too much time, but to cover all of the bases. So this is a Rashi sicha that is addressing a pasuk in this parsha. And it's on the halacha that a ganav, a, th- a thief, who steals a sheep, a, a, a lamb, or an ox, and slaughters it or sells it, has to pay four times or five times the amount of the value of the theft. So if a person steals, they have to return it. If they end up going to Besdin, if this ends up uh, uh, in front of Besdin, there's a knas. And he has to pay kefel, he has to pay double. But if it was a lamb or, or an ox, and he slaughtered it, and he, or he sold it, then he pays four times or five times, as you will see in the Sicha, and the discussion is going to be the difference why uh, the lamb only pays four times, and by the ox he pays five times. There'll be two opinions, that of Rebbechen and Menzakai, and that of Reb Meir, and we're going to see uh, the differences between the two and how they complement one another in a very, very fascinating and beautiful building that we are about to experience. Seif Aleph. In the Pirish of Rashi on the Pasuk, if a person steals a, a, an ox or a lamb, and he slaughters it, or he sells it, Chamiksha Bakar Yeshalam Tachas Asher. He has to pay five times the amount of the ox, the Arbat Sain Tachas Aser, and four times the amount of the sheep. Bring Rashi up two times in for Vosti Tashlumin for Tvichu Mechidas and in Baasher Mervi Baaser. So Rashi brings two reasons why the payment for the ox is more than the payment for the sheep. As the pasuk says, "Chamisha gemer tachas asher," but by the ox, it's five times the value of the ox. The arba gemer tachas asher, but by the lamb, by the sheep, it's four times the value of the lamb. So Rashi says, "This is a, this is based on the Gemara in Baba Kama and other places." Omer of Yechon and Mazake, Yechon and Mazake says, "Chos amokim al kveden shel briyos." The Abishter takes into consideration the dignity of the creations. An ox that could walk on its own feet, and the Ganev had no shame uh, in walking it, to have to carry it on his shoulders. So he pays five times the amount, he pays the full price, the full knas. Sesh and noisy oxy, but a lamb that has to be carried on the shoulder, and that is somewhat disgraceful for the person. Mishalem Dalit, he pays four times Hoylvin is Bazaboy because he was disgraced by doing so. So we make him pay a little less. The fine is a little smaller. That's Rabbi Echenon's uh, uh, approach, Kavad Abrius, and if the person did not uh, experience Kavad Abrius, that in itself is a form of punishment, and therefore he pays less. Omer Reb Meir, Reb Meir has a different approach. See how powerful is the uh, the idea of work, how important work is. An ox, which could have been used for plowing and was not able to do its work, he pays five times. But a, a lamb that doesn't really do anything, so there was no loss of work, uh, Medalid pays only four times. So the mayor is focusing not so much on Kavad Abrius, the mayor is focusing on work ethic. If there is a, 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 a loss of work, then the thief pays more. In the case of the sher, he pays five times. Darfan Farstein, so we're going to ask three questions to begin with. Three very classic questions. Rashi Sikha questions. Alif Arvos Natik Sikh Rashi in Sway Taimim. Why does Rashi need two reasons? If ever Rashi brings two reasons, it's because one, one reason is missing something. What is, what is either of the reasons missing? That because of that, Rashi needs to bring two reasons. Base. The Gerat Fil Mol is Rashi, Maitik, Dem Nomen from Balamemre, Nordan, Venus does Git, Ateis, Vesbir, in Sain Pirish. It's spoken many times that Rashi only brings the name of the person who made the statement if it adds anything in the understanding of the explanation. So in our case, as the What is added to our understanding by 
uh, by uh, uh, letting us know that these reasons were given by the Yechon and Ben Zakkai and by the Meir, respectively. Gimel, here's another thing. If it said it would mean it's a machlaikis. Because they say person one says a statement, and the mayor says to, to argue with that. If it says Omar Mayor, it sounds like it's starting a new thing. That a mayor has another statement that's un, that's not coming to dispute the previous statement, it's just something else on the same topic. So Rashi says Omar Mayor. Not for Rab Meir, but for that as in Rav Erter, who had these two days when he brought this the Girsa Amar Rav Bechulu, Rab Meir Omer Bechulu. A signal for Machlekes. In most of the cases where the Gemara brings or the Medrashim bring this discussion between Rab Yechon and Zakin and Rab Meir, it brings it as Rab Meir Omer, implying that it is, it is a Machlekes, a dispute between the two. When Rashi claims this Davke the two Girsa as by Beidah Shtei as by as by Beidah Days Shtei Amar Rav Bechulu Rashi. Chooses the less popular version where both Rabbi Yechonah and Zakai and the mayor are both introduced as Omer Rab, etc., and not the mayor Omer is moving as Rashi in the Nitan al Derech Abshat as is the Apluk to So, from the fact that Rashi says that Omer Rab Meir, this implies that Rashi does not accept this as a dispute. Between the two, Rabbi Yechonah and Zaki and Rabbi Meir, nor Maro Marchado, Maro Marchado, Valei Pliki, it's just each person is making their own statement and they're not arguing with each other. Isn't it move on? And this raises a question to us. They're coming from two different places. Rabbi Yechonah and Zaki is talking about Kavad Dabrius. Rabbi Meir is talking about uh, about Kaycha, uh, Shalmalacha, the importance of work. The, the, the content of the two opinions, of the two approaches, are very different. How are they not arguing? Nochmer. Additionally, as betracht sich in die zwei Teilen, if you look a little bit deeper into these two reasons, Zetman as they nit blois verschiedene, nor ich hofrisdike Teilen. You'll see that not only are they different, they're actually opposing one another. Late in Tamfan of Yechonim and Zakai, if you follow Rabbi Yechonim and Zakai's reasoning, Kum Tois as the Knas Farut Vachi Mecharit of Zantash Lumi Chamisha. Cypher Sher and Cypher Set. It implies that the, the, the main, the principal, the, 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 the real price of this Knas for someone who, who slaughters or sells should have been five, whether it's an ox or a sheep. It's just that we deduct one of the times of the value because of the disgrace that the Ganev, that the thief experienced. Conversely, Reb Meir's opinion seems to imply as the Knas Betzim is Arba, that the original price of the Knas is four. Four times the value. And it's just that by the ox, we're adding an extra round, extra time, an extra time of value because there was an there was another uh, issue here that the sher couldn't do its work. So even though the original price was four, we up it to five. So Reb Yechonon seems to imply that the original price is five, and we deduct it to four in the case of the set of the sheep. Reb Meir seems to imply that the original price is four, and we up it to five in the case of the sher. How can you say that they're not arguing? He introduces each of them as if they are not arguing. When there is a difference between these two opinions in their kamus from the chiyav knas for zich, in the amount, in the original amount of the knas, if it's not for the side things that come up, the need their time of two given and up and if not for the side details that you have to deduct it for the for the disgrace that he experienced or add something for the lack of work that was done. The original price according to Reb Yechanan is five. The original price according to the mayor is four. How could you say? How could Rashi imply that they're not arguing? In Siv Beis, he's going to ask about the order. Why is Reb Yechanan and Zakai first? Especially since Reb Yechonon, usually in, in this in this in this uh, uh, discussion, Reb Meir is usually first, and he's going to explain a reason why Reb Yechonon Mazakai is first, saying that Reb Yechonon Mazakai is more consistent with 
the psukim with the understanding of the psukim that the mayor is. Nochat Tmiya is often said there for the Tzvei Deis and Pirish Rashi. Another question we can ask is on the order. In the Ertev, we severing Gibrach, the Tzvei Taim of Anabi Yechon Amazaki and the Meir, in most of the places where these two opinions are brought, or these two approaches are brought, Shteit Friya, Das Rebbe Meir, and the Nochat Tzvei Yechon Amazaki. First they bring Rebbe Meir, then they bring Rebbe Yechon Amazaki. As said the Farkei Tzvi and Pirish Rashi, which is the opposite of the order of Rashi. Hain Farvos is Rashi, Mishan of the Meseder. So why does Rashi change the order when Shteit Tzvei Friya, the Tam of Anabi Yechon Amazaki? And brings first Rabbi Yechon Mazaka before Rabbi Meir. The Chayr of Omega Kemfer Emferin. So we can answer this question. The Undos Afen Yisaid from Friers Gezokt and Hezber from the Tzvei Deis. We can answer this question based on the foundation that we just brought in the previous Seif. That Rabbi Yechon Mazaka holds that the, that the original price was five times. Original Knas is five times, and the mayor holds the original knas is four times. Using that, following that reasoning, we're going to understand why Rabbi Yechonah Manzaka is first. As later, Rabbi Yechonah Manzaka is the Ike Knas Chamisha. According to Rabbi Yechonah Manzaka, the, the original knas is five. And later, Rabbi Meir, Arba, four. Since the Torah in the Pasuk, in this Pasuk, mentions first five times the, the, the ox, and then mentions four times the lamb, so this would cause my understanding, my Seichel, to lean in the direction. That first the Torah tells us what the original Amount of the knas is chamisha bakar that the original knas is five. Under noch vase kum der knas was is to liba tam geminet givarn for nikir aschum. And then by the se he mentions that the original number was deducted. Geminet means diminished, was lessened because from the original schum varbat saying that you only pay four. So if you look at the pasuk, you would think first the pasuk tells us what the price should be. And then tells us in some cases, in the case of the lamb, it's, it, it, it's deducted. So which means that according to the way you understand the Chumash, five is the original price, and it's just deducted to four in the case of a lamb. Kum as the shita from Rabbi Yechon and Zakai is mer behesens mashmaos akasuv. This is exactly how we explained earlier is Rabbi Yechon and Zakai's approach, that the original price is five, the original knas is five, and it's just that we deduct one, one of the times in the case of the sheep. So therefore the, the, the Pasik, the way we understand the Pasik, is now consistent with Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai's approach to this uh, knas. He's the male move of us Rasha, but in Yon is the Psutu Shal Mikra, is Matin the Tavar Yechonah Zakkai, for the Tavar Yechonah Zakkai. So that would make sense why Rashi puts Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai first. Because we know that what is, Rashi is Psutu Shal Mikra, Rashi always goes for the basic understanding of the Psukim. So if Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai's approach is more consistent with the basic understanding of the Psukim than Rabbi Meir's is, then Rabbi Ashi is going to put Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai first because Rashi doesn't have to follow what the, the way the Gemara or the Medrash does it. Rashi has to do the way it works best for Psutim Shal Mikra. So since according to Pshutu Shal Mikra, we understand that we start with Chamisha, which is the original price, and then we tell you that sometimes it gets deducted to four in the case of a Bizoyin when there's a disgrace, when there's shame involved for the Ganev, so which that is Rabbi Yechanan's approach. That's why Rabbi Yechanan comes first, because he's most consistent with the Psukim. However, based on this, this would raise a question, if... The, if Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai is so beautifully uh, uh, consistent with the Psukim, Rashi could have totally excluded the, the approach of Rabbi Meir. And then, and only bring Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai. Why do, why do we even need Rabbi Meir? Rashi could have said, the reason why there's five, why, why by the Shoir there's five and by the Se there's four because the Rechon Mazake said that the original price is five so therefore by the Shoir is five and by the Se we, uh, we, we, we were kind to the person because he went through a disgraceful situation by having to schlep the, the, the Se on his shoulders so therefore we deducted one round one time and he only pays four and everything would make sense it fits in with the Psukim we it gives us an explanation why do we need a mayor so when Siv Gimel is going to explain why we need a mayor and based on what he's going to tell us, why we need a mayor, he's going to show to us that they're actually not arguing. They're actually coming from two different places, and they're not arguing. They're just giving you two different perspectives. Sif Gimel. 
they're beer in them. Eib mizol zagin, as the ikit tashlumi aknas is chamisha. If you're going to follow the Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai approach, that the original price, the original knas is five. When das was by said, sold their gun of blaze arba, and the fact that by the sheep, the gun of only thief only pays four, is this to leave in Tam Hayolv in his baza, is because he, he was disgraced uh, 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 by, during the, when, he was, uh, taking the, when he was taking the sheep. For the Dzichaz, but this would demand an explanation. Emes Taka has their gun of kumt up a chilek from the Einish, the mitvah's nis it's true that the Ganav, the thief, is receiving part of his punishment by the disgrace. The, the fact that he, had, that he was disgraced, the fact that he experienced shame, is part of his punishment. And therefore, we, 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 we make him pay less. How does this compensate for the amount of money that the victim, the person from whom he stole, should receive? In other words, how does the victim gain by the fact that the thief was shamed? In other words, you're, you're, you're telling me that the thief pays less because he was shamed. How does that help the victim? And this is why Rashi has, has to bring Reb Meir's opinion as well. The reason is because the share didn't work. Which according to this reason, the original price that the Nignev deserves is for... Nor by share to leave them, given myself in their Gnev. It's only by the share because there was a greater loss. Because Bitlaim Malachta, he stole more from him because he couldn't work. He had been basically in Tishlum, we give extra payment. But in the, the original payment, in the case where there's no Bitl Melacha, where there's no lack of work, the original price is four. You can't ask the question, what did the Nignev lose? The Nignev got everything he deserves. He deserves four, and he got four. So the mayor's approach helps us understand that the Nignev, the victim, the person from whom this, this, this was stolen is getting everything he deserves. So now he's going to continue and say that Rabbi Yechonim and Zake is coming from the perspective of the Ganev. And therefore he starts with five. That the Ganev is obligated to pay five uh, uh, originally unless there's a bizayin, unless there's a disgrace involved. And the mayor is coming from the perspective of the Nignev, of the victim, where the victim deserves four. So, and they're not arguing, they're just looking at it from two different sides. Thus, mate, as Rabbi Yechonim and Zakai and Rabbi Meir, and Mechulik, they are not disputing one another. In their kamus from Ikira Knas, in the amount of the original Knas price. Nor is it a red zain in Litzdodin. Litzdodin means they're looking at, at, at two different sides of the same coin. As Venzich, like in Velchet Sadat Sadatzich. Which side are you looking at? If you look at the crime of the thief, and therefore how much he has to pay, his crime is, a, is one that is worth five times the value of the thing that he stole. And again, since we're coming from the perspective of the Ganev, so therefore, if there was a se, it was a sheep, we take into consideration his shame. And then we deduct from his punishment, from the original number of five, we deduct one time. If you're looking at it from the side of the, th of the victim, how much he suffered is the knas arba. The original price is four. Nor by shoyer is da un menhates ginuman and chesbin dem tsugab shodden for nignev. By a shoyer there is an additional damage to the victim, and therefore we take that into consideration. She beat leim melachta that he couldn't do his work. When the pharmacist gives him a mikra knas, we give him an extra knas, number five. To say that Rabbi Yechonim and Zaki read with us is mitzad dem ganev. Rabbi Yechonim and Zaki is coming from the perspective of the ganev, and Rabbi Meir mitzad dem nignev, and Rabbi Meir is coming from the perspective of the victim, and therefore they they, they they seem to be saying different things because they're just looking at it from two sides of the coin. In the end, everyone agrees that a shayr is five, and a say it says four. A say is a say as a shayr is five, and a say is four. It's just that Rabbi Yechonim and Zaki is saying, look how terrible the ganev is. We have to give him a big punishment. The mayor is saying we have to compensate the nignev. The nignev by giving him four times the amount, that's a fair compensation unless there was extra damage of Bitlim and Malachter. So therefore we have thus 
Let's okay. Let's do one more seif and then we'll summarize. Lay them come to us. But if our is mocked him, the day of an abirchen will not be part of the day. And this also explains to us an additional understanding why Rashi puts the abirchen before the mayor. For the mazayif fears the turch the seif from tashlumen. Rashi is looking at the order of how of how the payment is implemented. Their own abis does was their gan nevet mechuyiv um batzal to tashlumen. We start by making the thief liable to pay, and then he pays. So therefore, subsequently, the, the victim receives the compensation that, that which he deserves. So first comes what the Ganav pays, and then comes what the, what the victim receives. And therefore, Rashi starts with, with Rabbi Yochan on Mazaka, he was talking about the obligation of the Ganav. And then he brings the mayor who discusses what the Nignev receives. This also uh, makes, uh, helps understand why the Teira emphasizes that the main Knas is Chamisha. We said in Siv Beis that from the fact that the Teira says first Chamisha and then Arba, first five and then four, implies that the Teira sees it. That the, that the primary, the original price is five, and just sometimes it's deducted to four. Zayin dik muktum because of since it's first in the Torah. Val di Torah is malam eshtun and biikir kevei ani tifol so vakum der nignev. Nor vifol es dav zayin der yeshalim funim ganav because the Torah is here primarily to tell us what is the obligation of the ganav of the thief more than how much the nignev has to receive. It's telling us the liability of of the ganav that it's that, that, that primarily it's five. Unless, and sometimes we deduct it to four. So now, we've answered our questions. Why does Rashi need two reasons? So the, number one, Rabbi uh, Yechon uh, is the one that's closer to Pesut Yishol Mikra. Rabbi Meir is also telling us how we see it from the, from the perspective of the nignum of the victim to say that it's not like he's getting gypped because of the Ganev's shame, but he's getting his full, his full uh, due uh, compensation, which is four times. Why does he... Uh, um, why does he say because they're not arguing they're coming from two, from two different perspectives why so he says because they're not arguing and why does the Bechon Mazaka come first first of all because he's, most, he's more consistent with the Pasuk and second of all because he's coming from the perspective of the Ganev and the Ganev has to first pay before the Nignev can get paid so the, the, the order of payment starts with the Ganev and then it goes to the victim so we've answered our questions the one we have not touched upon yet is why their names are mentioned. And that is what we're going to talk about in Seif Hey. And we're going to bring in another Machleikis, Rabbi Yechel Menzakai and Rabbi Meir. Or not, I shouldn't say Machleikis. Another uh, uh, discussion where Rabbi Yechel Menzakai and Rabbi Meir both weigh in. And it's going to be about the difference between a Ganev and a Gazlin, a thief and a robber, which we're going to talk about in Seif Hey. And based on that, we're going to learn from there as to why Rabbi Yechel Menzakai and the Meir have their opinions here. That Rabbi Yechel Menzakai looks at the Ganev and the mayor looks at the nignev at the victim. So, in other words, the, the naming them is, is going to uh, uh, lead us to this, other machle, to this other discussion and will help us understand their different approaches. The Gizog Trier, Benegea Dem, was Rashi, bring that up of the Firusha, Ech, the name of the Valley of It was said earlier with regards to the fact that Rashi brings the names. As does is to live taste his beer and Zaympirish, because it adds explanation, it adds understanding to his uh, to his commentary. In this case, the fact that Rabbi and Zakai is highlighting the, the, the knas, the fine, as it is from the Ganav side, from the perspective of the Ganav. And therefore he is more stringent. As the Rikira Knas is Khamisha, that the original price of the Knas is five. While the mayor is talking about it from the perspective of the victim, when there is makel in them and he is more lenient, that the ikra knas is blaze arba, that the primary original number of the knas is four, it does behesem so that your shit is is consistent with their approaches in another discussion, in another area. In the second of the kama on azayich and tanchuma, wherein gebrach di oven der monte memenis from the mayor and the mazaki and the mayor. In Mesech de Baba Kama, and also in Medrash Tanchuma, these statements of Rabbi Yechel and Zaki and Rabbi Meir, and notice it doesn't say the Machloikas, it says Memrus, these, these statements of Rabbi Yechel and Zaki and Rabbi Meir, Behemshech to Zayra Memrus, Benegea Dem Tam Achilik, Sishin Aganev on Agazlin. 
in continuation to their statements with regards to the difference between a thief and a robber. A ganav is a thief. This is someone who steals uh, uh, during the night. I Meaning to say, uh, covertly. He's, he's in hiding. When a gazlin, a gazlin is a robber, someone who's during the day, or someone who's brazen enough to steal or to rob in public. And the din is, in the parentheses, he says, a ganav, a ganav, a thief, pays double. Or if the, if the animal was, sto- was slaughtered or sold, he pays four times or five times, which is the discussion of the Sikha. Una gazlin, but a robber, Alamo blazed them keren. Only pays, always only pays the principal. Which is, a, which is a very interesting thing. The robber is someone who goes, let's say, goes up to someone in the middle of the street, in the middle of the day, and robs something from him publicly, brazen enough uh, 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 to uh, uncaring, and he pays just the principal. The Ganev, who goes in the middle of the night and breaks in and steals something and, and, and runs out quietly, he's paying double or four times or five times. So the Gemara says like this, So Rabbi Yechelem Zakai's disciples asked of him, Why is the Tater more stringent with the thief than it is with the robber? Omar Le. So he says like this, Ze, this one, namely the Gazlin, the robber, Hishva Kvoid Eved Likvoid Koinoi equates the respect that he has for the master, for the, for the servant, as the, the respect that he has for the master, for the, for the creator. Meaning to say that Gazlin doesn't care about people, he doesn't care about the Abishter. He's not scared of the Abishter, so he steals. He's not scared of people, so he steals in broad daylight. Vizeh, but the Ganev, the thief, he doesn't equate the respect that he has for the servant to the respect that he has for the, for the creator. When it comes to the creator, he doesn't care about the Abishter. He goes and he steals. But when it comes to people, he's respectful enough not to steal in their faces. He's either scared of them or respectful of them, but he won't steal publicly. So he's, 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 he's scared of people, but he's not scared of Hashem. And Rabbi Yechonim Zake continues, Kivu Yachul, Osa Ayin Shel Mata, He makes as if the eye of Hashem down below, Ki Ilu Eneroye cannot see, Vi Oizen Shel Mata, And the ear of Hashem down below here in this world, Ki Ilu Eneroye Shema, As if it could not, he cannot hear, Shenem Archulu, Umbrekter of Drei Psukim, And he brings three Psukim, Which are going to be mentioned later on in the Sicha. So Rabbi Yechonim Zake says very simple, The Gazlin, the gazlin is a chutz binyak. He goes and he steals, so he has to pay back. But the ganiv, the ganiv is worse because the ganiv, who is not is scared of people, but he's not, or he respects people, but he doesn't respect Hashem. And for that, we give him a knas of paying more. That was Rabbi Yechonim opinion. Approach. Omer Reb Meir. Reb Meir has a different approach. Mashlu, Mashul, Mishum, Rabban Gamliel. They gave a Mashul, they gave a parable for this in the name of Rabban Gamliel. Le Mo, Hadover, Doimah, to what is this compared? Le Beis, Bnei Yadam, Shoyu, Bir, Vashumishta, two people that were in a town and they made a party. Echa, Ziminus, Bnei Yerbali, Ziminus, Bnei Amelech. One person invited the townspeople but did not invite the family of the king. Ve Echa, Le Ziminus, Bnei Ha'ir, Le Ziminus, Bnei Amelech. The other person made a private party, exclusive. He didn't invite, not the townspeople, and not the king's family either. Which of these two people are going to get a greater punishment? The guy who invited nobody, okay, he invited nobody. How much can you punish him? But the guy who invited the whole town and didn't invite the king's family, that's terrible. So the one who invited the townspeople, but did not invite the king's family, the king's children, this is the greater punishment. Similarly, the, 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 the uh, Goslin didn't invite the, the, the townspeople, didn't invite the king. It, it, it means to say he didn't show respect to the, to, the, to the victim, didn't show respect to Hashem. So therefore, he gets, a punish, but not such a big, uh, gets punished, but not such a big punishment. Uh, uh, the Ganev, he invited the townspeople, which means he respected them by going in surreptitiously and, and, and not stealing publicly. But then he did not invite the king's family because from Hashem, he wasn't afraid. And therefore his punishment is bigger.
There's many nuances here that could be addressed. Some of them will be, will, will be understood in the explanation later on in the Sikha. But let's analyze this, 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 uh, these two approaches. The Untershet Zvishner of Meir's Marshal, Undem Hezber for Nabi Echram and Zakai, is moving in Pashtus. So now t- t- the difference between their two explanations is very simply understood. In Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai's veritair is mudgish dos vas bam gane fel dimer of our neighbors. In Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai's words, there is an emphasis on the fact that the ganev lacks fear of Hashem. Vas is noch weniger vis aimer of our bnei adam, which is even less than his fear of other people. Vas der far derik zechu is ein avla in dem. Vas kesiyum diver Yechonah ben Zakkai kivi, and therefore his crime. Is expressed in the fact as Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai concludes, "Kiviyachal asa ayin shalmatik ilo in the It makes as if the Abister can't see. So, so, so Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai is focusing on the on the uh, on the, uh, the on the sin on the crime of the Ganav. Overlaid the divided of Meir is the adgosha of them was the Ganav. The mayor is saying, look, he's showing more respect for the thief than he is showing for Hashem. So Rabbi Yechon Mazaka is focusing on what the Ganav is not doing. He's not respecting Hashem. The mayor is focusing on the fact that he is respecting the Ganav. the in the type was Lizim and Bnei Amelach. And using the Moshe, the, the, the crime is not so much that he didn't invite the king. The crime is that he did invite the rest of the townspeople when he didn't invite the king. Here too, they're not arguing one, with one another. As it's clearly evident from the fact that it says Omer Reb Meir, and we explained earlier in the Sicha that Omer Reb Meir means that it's not an argument. It's just that each of them are focusing on a different element, on a different aspect of the same explanation. Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakeh is focusing on the crime as it is from the Ganif. And the fact that he, Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakeh says it first, that he did not equate the respect for the servant to the respect of the creator, which to hear the servant means that the person who he's stealing from is a gidom, is only an introduction, a preface, to, 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 to prove that the ganav is denying the fact that the Abishter is supervising, is overlooking everything. Also, Ayin Shalmata, he, 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 he makes it as if the Abishter can't see. Now, Kagin, the mayor, the mayor, on the other hand, is taking into consideration also the, the, the side of the, of the person who was stolen from. That he got, he got more respect. And therefore he concludes that the Ganev, the thief, is respecting the, 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 the victim. Respect that he does not have for the Ebishter. And thus is Behesem to unser Indian. And this is consistent with the fact that Rabbi Yechonah Mazake sees things from the perspective of the Ganev in our case. And therefore he gives him Chamisha like we'll see in Sivav. And the mayor looks at it from the Nignev, from the perspective of the victim. And therefore he starts out with Arba with four times. So we now understand. Why and we'll, we'll we'll complete this and see above. But now we're beginning to understand why the why Rashi brings Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai and the Me, and the mayor's names because Rabbi Rashi is structuring his understanding that Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakkai is coming from the perspective of the Ganav, the, 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 the thief. The uh, mayor is coming from the perspective of the Nignev of the victim, the person who was he was stolen from, and therefore he mentions the names to say, look, I'm not making this up. We read in the previous conversations about the Ganev and the Gazlin, over there also Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakeh and the mayor give two explanations where Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakeh focuses on the, on the, 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 the misdeeds of the Ganev and, Rabbi, and the mayor focuses on the respect to the Nignev, on the treatment of the Nignev of the victim. 
And now we're going to we're going to apply this to the Chamisha and the Arba. This difference in, in the Razbar of Arbasik Mira Tere began of Yesim of Begadlun. In the, in the explanation why the Tere is more stringent with a thief than it is with a robber. Doesn't just tell me why the Bechel Mazaki is looking at the Ganev and the Meir at the victim at the Nignev. It also sheds light on why Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakkai says that the original number is five and the mayor says the original number is four. Late Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakkai. According to Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakkai, as he could have the best state in the Chigan of Skisar and Amun and the Ratzkoch of Nebishin. Now the primary evil, the primary Problem with a Ganav is this lack of faith in Hashem. But that he pretends like the Abishter cannot see what's happening down here in this world. So when it comes to the Knas, we look at how severe his sin is. And therefore the, knas, the starting point of the Knas is five because his his crime is great. Not only did he steal, but he also lacks faith in Hashem. But according to the mayor that says, what's the sin of the Ganav? The fact that he has too much, so to speak, respect for the, for, for the, for the victim. He has more respect for the victim than he does for Hashem. He does gufa and the sinus mokim mizo mitzad them ganivs covered but sin to them nigniv. So this creates a reason that because the, the at least the vict the gan of the thief shows some respect to the nigniv to the victim the gan the nigniv makes us need to show the gan of some nigniv that we should be a little bit lenient in this knas and therefore it mayor starts with the starting point of four so not only do we understand why it's now when a mayor when nashi says the names of yechon and zakai and the mayor not only does it give us to understand that Rabbi Yechon Mazaka is coming from the perspective of the Ganav and the mayor is coming from the perspective of the Nignav, but it also helps us to understand the Arba and the Chamisha. That Rabbi Yechon Mazaka sees this crime as much, a much greater crime. The Ganav is, lacks faith in Hashem. And therefore, the price, the, the, the starting point of the Knas is five. Mashaikin Rabbi Meir, on the other hand, is looking at the way the, the victim is being treated. And some respect, obviously he was being stolen from, so he's not a, a full-fledged proper respect, but some modicum of respect is being given to him that at least he's not stealing, stealing from him in his face. And therefore, his starting point is four, the, the smaller number. In Sif Zion, he's going to make the following point. It's actually a very, very uh, 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 fascinating point. And that is, is that in the opinions of Rabbi Yechonah and Zaki and the mayor, there's two parts. Part number one is what we've been discussing till now, that Rabbi mayor starts at five, that Rabbi Yechonah starts at five, and the mayor starts at four. But then there was another aspect, which we haven't really discussed so much uh, in the last few Seifim, and that is, is that Rabbi Yechonah looks at the idea of Kavad Abrius, the, the respect, the dignity of creations, and therefore lowers the price to four by the seh. And Reb Meir looks at, at Koycha Shalmalacha, the importance of work ethic, and ups the price to five by the shor. Now, so far, that second aspect, the, 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 the Kavad Abrius versus Koycha Shalmalacha, has not really been uh, addressed with regards to the names Reb Yechon and Zakei and, and Reb Meir. So in Ziv Zayin is going to say is that it's true that we explained that the names of Yechonah ben Zakeh and Reb Meir with regards to the, the Ganev versus the Nignev, the five versus the four. But we haven't really, it would be, it's going to use the word Geshmaker. It would be much more enjoyable if we can connect also the second part of Rabbi Yechonah ben Zakeh and Reb Meir to their names and why Rashi would mention their names with regards to the second part that Rabbi Yechonah looks at at Kavad Abrius, and the mayor looks at Kecha Shomalacha, the power of work ethic, and that's going to be the second half of the Sikha. Siv Zayn.
According to this explanation, we can understand. As that by mentioning the names, is Rashi blows oisin onto daitin of Hasbara Nesef. Rashi is is out. Rashi's goal is to point out to us an additional explanation. Why one is focusing on the obligation of the knas from the perspective of the ganav? When their father is a rikir haknas chamisha, and therefore the original number is five. When their zveiter vidos is mitzada nigniv, and the second the mayor is looking at it from the perspective of the victim of the one who was stole it was stolen from. When ikir haknas is therefore arba, and the original number of the knas is four. So th- 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 that's the that, that's the sole purpose of Rashi saying the names. That's how we have it till now. It would be much more enjoyable to say, as their mitvas Rashi is my take the name of Pirushe, the fact that Rashi is quoting the names, that Rashi also wants to explain, give us an, an extra explanation, an additional explanation in their explanations. The deducts. From the number, from the from the knas, because of the shame or the disgrace that the Ghana experienced. And thus was the mayor named on as to leave them as bitli and malachti of in sugi given the tishlumi asher. And the fact that the mayor holds accepts that the fact that because of the lack of work, we have to increase the number in the by the by the share. He does totally and says shitzmakamacher. That too should somehow be connected to their shitos in other places. And if we can connect. Uh, their names and their shitos, namely, in other words, with their opinions here, it would make this much more gishmak. And therefore, we're now going to delve in to Rabbi Yechelen and Zake's approach, to the mayor's approach, and each time we're going to see how their names and their, we need to say their shitos, who, what they represent, helps us understand their approach here in this case of the Arba Vachamish. We're going, to stand, we're going to understand this. First, we have to understand a little bit better the approach of Rehichon and Zakai. And the way we do that is by throwing in a bunch of questions that sort of dissect the entire approach of Rehichon and Zakai. And once we get to the answer, we'll understand a whole nother, we'll get a whole nother uh, uh, understanding in Rehichon and Zakai. Why does the Torah differentiate between Sheir and Seh only if he slaughtered or sold it? The shame starts when he, when he stole it. When you steal a, a, an ox, there's no shame. And when there's a, when, when, when it's a, an, a, 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 a lamb, there is shame. So even when you just steal, and you didn't slaughter it, and you didn't sell it, you're just stealing it, there should have been a difference between a, an ox and a, a lamb, because there's more shame. And the din is the Pasik says very clearly that whether it's an ox or a lamb, you pay double if there was no slaughtering or selling. Question one, why do we wait until slaughtering or selling to differentiate between the ox and the lamb? Base. Shame really exists only if there's somebody else there. In front of whom we feel disgraced. So how does it fit to say that he was disgraced by stealing a sheep? It's being done in secret. It's being done covertly. And no one sees how he's stealing the seh. So if a tree falls in the forest, if a, if, if a thief steals and nobody sees, then there's no shame. Question two. Question three. Gibel. Rashi introduces the Abister takes into consideration or the Abister has compassion for the dignity of creations. So the Khlachedim aspect bent on even Bad Vidiver to share Shaykh Badaglov. Every part of Rashi is is precise. Rashi doesn't have extra statements. So he could have just said the Shay goes by foot, can walk on its feet, there's no shame, and therefore he pays five, etc. Why does he have to introduce this concept of Kvaidun Shal is the dignity of creations? If he does want to bring this introduction, 
ובפרט על פי פסודי של מקרה, זה לא שונה לגיסא אינטנחומה, שחס הכל זמן אוכל אפילו על גנב. It would have been more appropriate to follow the version of the Tanchuma, where he says that the Eibishter has mercy or compassion even on a thief. מה שאינקין דה לושן בריאס, ואיסי זה לושן פירש רשי, ואיסי מי ניצו מתארת על איש פחס וחייתא. רשי זה לטרם בריאס. בריאס does not represent a low down person, a גנב וכייצת וסמון who is like a thief. She's not a tire of us vice of headed a mile as Brias be Alma. Brias is used to describe someone that has no special qualities. But he's not a bad person. If you want to make the point that Hashem has compassion, even on a Ganev, it would have been a much bigger point, a, a much greater point to make. So why does Dashi stop, so to speak, at Brias and say Hashem has compassion on the dignity of creations and doesn't say even more that Hashem has compassion even on the, on the dignity of the Ganev? So that's four questions. Why does... Why does the differentiation between Shair and Seh begin at Tvicha or Mechira? Why, how is there any Bizoyin if no one sees? Why does Rashi say Chasam Lakam Afeid and Shobriyais? And why does Rashi use Briyais instead of Ganav? Is there beer in them? So here's the explanation. We're actually going to use question two to answer question one. Question two was that no one sees. So he says like this, eh, Mr. Akash B'Shal Sagnev is not by Ganav came Bizoyin. It's true that during the act of stealing, there is no shame by the Ghana because Navarro has to take Neva Besaysa because he's doing it covertly. Because of Tfriyar, as mentioned earlier, Beshas, and the Chapta, where the Ghana will bring to me Bezdin when the Ghana gets caught. And he's brought to Bezdin, and all the divisions he has that he can get under by Gitarag in the Shetzel Ksefei, and then it becomes known that he was a thief and he had to carry the sheep on his shoulders. Then we'll tell for him a Bezoyin, then the Bezoyin then becomes embarrassing for him. When the river is by him, the Bezoyin nor a Bezgan Tvichu Mechira, we need by Gneva Lein, and this explains. Question one, why is the why is the embarrassment only by Tvichu Mechira? By Gneva is Dachni Taki Chilik Vaser at Gigandet. When a person steals, there's no difference what he stole. In other words, when you go up to Bezdin to have to pay for stealing, it doesn't matter what you stole. Nor vifol does his vert. What matters is the value. Men frakni tzid does a kela. Oder a se, oder a sher. We don't say was it a vessel or an ox or a sheep. Nor vifol is very different today. But the discussion is what is the value of the of the theft. The Rashi shrives better. Kol dover b'chalat shlumi kevel. Everything Rashi says. Everything is included in in the in in what in in the din. That you have to pay double. Whether it is a living being, whether a living thing, whether it's not a living thing. So therefore, you come to Bez and you say, "What was the value of the of the of the theft? A hundred dollars? Okay, he's going to pay two hundred. We don't go into the what exactly it was." But when a person uh, sold it or he or he slaughtered it, and now she says that the whole concept of Dalad Vev of paying five times or four times is only by an ox or a sheep. So Bishasma bring him to Bezdin with the unklage. As Twachimakhari, when he's brought to Bezdin with a claim, unklage, the claim that he slaughtered or he, or, or he sold it, Domus Klader is Kibrach Vernazar Gigamatasa. So now what he stole becomes an issue. He, if, if he slaughtered it, if he sold it, we have to decide. Is he going to pay four times? Is he going to pay five times? Uber mail and his baza boy. And therefore, now is when the shame kicks in. In other words, when he stole it, there was talking no shame. And therefore, there's no differentiation between shayr and seb by, by theft. When he comes to Bezdin and they're discussing whether it was a shayr or a seb, now the shame kicks in. Al pisa abed is nidglatik. But if that's the case, then this Raises this raises a big issue. We bow that the bezayim by shteitn it was bezetem tragin them said if 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 the shame that we're addressing here is not that he was seen walking through the streets schlepping a sheep on his shoulders nor from the revisen zich therefore it's just that it became known the achers man at a later time when men bring them ganav in bezden when the ganav is ultimately brought to bezden. We come and rap them with the ganz and word from them said to the bezakli in the bezayim. Why would we deduct? The entire value of a sheep for such a, a minute amount of shame. This is why Rashi introduces the words of that something is unique over the Abishter has an extra sense of compassion when it comes to cover the Abriz to the dignity of his creations. By following the letter of the law, possibly we should not have deducted this much. 
because of a minute amount of shame that he experienced. He said, but the Ebister has so much compassion for the dignity of his, of his creations. And because the Ebister's compassion, the Ebister is very lenient to deduct an entire amount of payment an entire value of the sheep, even though the shame was very, very, it was of a small amount. Alpiza is nit mukhrich. So that answers the third question. Why Rashi says chasam agam kain shobrius? Because it's dafke, once we understand that, that we could appreciate why the person is getting such a big deduction for such a small amount of shame. Alpiza is nit mukhrich. Al derech hapshat as chasa kaz baruch afil al ganav. But based on this, we cannot deduce from here that the Abishter has compassion on a Ganav. The Girsa Futan Choma. When the Far is Rashi Mishana Kanal, the Farashi changes the Girsa, the, 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 the wording, and he says, Briyas. But Rabbi Balder Bizoyim Vert Ersten Bezden, since the shame only becomes real, becomes, only happens once he's already in Bezden, Lachas Man Rav Noch Der Gneva. After a significant amount of time after the theft occurred, after he stole it, he sold it or he slaughtered it. Then he was caught. Then he was brought to Bezden. Then they had to find witnesses to corroborate the story of the, of the owner. This, is, this can take a lengthy amount of time. Not only does he have no benefit, no, no gain from the theft. Nor He realizes he's going to have to pay four times the amount of the sheep. So he therefore he certainly regrets the whole theft. He's far from a proper thief at this point. So therefore to say this kind of guy he stole, he stole, but he regrets it ten times over. And it's been a long time ago, and he lost, he lost a lot and gained nothing. So therefore, we can say, Abishter has compassion on him. So therefore, you can't derive from here that the Abishter has compassion on a Ganev, because this guy is not anymore a real Ganev, but we could derive from here that the Abishter has compassion on Briyais, on a, on, a low, on, on, a, on a basic person, and therefore the Abishter deducts the price the, 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 of his Knas. Now, why do we need to be Echen Mazaka's name? Because the Talmud Mamulach, the seasoned student, is unhappy still. And it's actually very interesting because usually in the Rashi Sichas, when he, when he, when, when, when he I shouldn't say usually, but a lot of the times, in the Rashi Sichas, when there's a, when there's a Baal HaMemre, when, when, when Rashi mentions the name, it's to address a Talmud Mamulach, a seasoned student. Because if it's something that's, that a regular Ben Chamesh Namikra needs to understand, then Rashi can't hide it inside of the name. Rashi has to explain it to us in the actual Rashi. But for a Talmud Mamulach, for a seasoned student, Rashi could actually mention the name and the, the, the seasoned student will make the association to another uh, uh, opinion of uh, to another opinion of this of this person and answer his question. So it's actually interesting that in the beginning, in the first round, we were talking about the first part of Rabbi Yechonim Zakir and Meir, we, we explained it without a Talmud Mulach. Now when we go a little bit deeper to understand the, 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 uh, to understand each of the opinions, the, the Talmud Mulach, uh, uh, the, the name of Yechonim Zakir is to answer the question of the seasoned student. If you live, if that season student is going to ask, so at the end of the day, how is it possible that the dignity of the people are so is so relevant as to be that because of a little tiny shame we are deducting an entire value of the gneva. Rashi addresses this by starting out with the name Rabbi Yechonim ben Zakkai. The Gemara says, the Gemara says. That nobody was ever able to greet Rabbi Yechonim and Zakkai to be the first one to greet him in, in the marketplace. Even, even a, a non-Jew. Rabbi Yechonim and Zakkai was always the first to greet the other person. Sorry. The dignity. 
the honor, the respect for the Avisar's creations was so precious by him that nobody would ever had a chance to say hello to him before he already said hello to them. Now, you, walk, you walk in the street, whoever he met, he always said hello or shalom or whatever, the, however it was said in those days. He was, and he was always the first one to do so. Even if it was a non-Jewish person and even if it was in the marketplace. In unser Fall, so it's understood that certainly in our case, where the thief already totally regretted Gitan Shuva, he even did Shuva after Gneva Canal on, on, on the theft. For Nemta Grayson or the field declines the Muslims and Bizoyan. So Rabbi Yechon and Zaki was the kind of person that was very into Kavad Abrius, was very uh, careful and very uh, scrupulous about. Honoring the Abishter's creations says that this person who is, who is already regretting his theft, already doing tshuva, we have to have a great amount of respect for them, even, and, and therefore we can deduct a large amount of money, even for a small bazillion. So this is the, this is the, the in-depth understanding of Reichen and Zakai. That, that the second part of Reichen and Zakai, uh, uh, which, is, which is the part of Kavad Abris, is the fact uh, uh, understand now that the Kavad Abrius, uh, 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 the, 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 the shame that the person experienced is triggered only after he had a and he ended up in Bezdin. And even though it's a very small amount of Bezoyin, Rabbi Yechel and Zakai is the kind of guy, the kind of, of Amoida, kind of Tada, I'm sorry, that, um, that, that, that is going to give him a big discount even for a small amount of of Vizoyim. Now we're going to go to Reb Meir. The beer was Rashi is mighty. Reb Meir is known in the in Shaykhis with the Svara, Sher Shabitlim and Malachte, to understand why Rashi quotes the name of Reb Meir with regards to Reb Meir's approach about the Sher who was not able to work. The Mephashtain, the Hakim was Rashi is a mighty far and goof at Tam, Omer Reb Meir, Boyer, E. Kamagod, or Kechos and Malacha. We're also going to delve a little bit into Reb Meir's approach. And we're going to ask the following question. Rashi begins Reb Meir's approach with the statement, come and see how great is the power of work. How is this statement relevant to understand the Pesukim? You could just say very simply, the, 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 the sheep, the, sorry, the ox was, was not able to work. Therefore the, the, therefore, the owner lost more money because he couldn't do his work. The guy is a taxi driver, and he take away his taxi, he can't make money. If the guy owns a share, the share does work. If he can't, doesn't have a share, he's losing money. So why do you have to say, Bo, you're the A, get base. In Gemara, state, Oich, by the town from the Birchim and Zachary, Bo, you're the A, Gamma, Kodl. This expression, come and see how great, in that case of the Kavad Abrius, is also used by the Birchim and Zachary. Why does Rashi mention this, uh, this introduction by the, by, by the mayor and not by the Rechonim and Zakai? In other words, something, there's an extra explanation that Rashi is giving to us by the mayor that's seen in these words. We have to understand what that is. Gimel ve'ikir. Vosis as a grace to Chiddush. Biz as the mayor zok met ashturim. What is the great, what, what is so revolutionary about a mayor's statement that with a whole fanfare, he goes and he says, come and see how great is the Kaych of Malacha. It's obvious that if the person lost uh, 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 money because he couldn't work, you have to pay him back that value. In other words, if you, you steal something worth $100, but with that $100, he could have made $200 during that time. It's obvious that you have to pay whatever loss you caused him. Nochmer. Earlier in Parshas Mishpatim, where it spoke about somebody who hurts another person, and because of that, that person can't go to work. It's called Sheves. A person has to pay. We call it in English disability. The fact that a person could not go to work because of the illness that was caused by another person, that person has to pay. Besides, for all the other things that he's paying, besides for the doctor bills, and besides for, for the, the, the uh, Nezek, Tsar, Ripuy, and Boishas, he also has to pay Shevas. He has to pay the money that the guy can't work. And Rashi does not mention over there, come and see how great is the power of work. So, so we already know the idea of, 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 of Shevas. 
So, so why is Dashi making such a big deal out of it? Why does Dashi not make a big deal of it early, earlier on? And why does Dashi not make a big deal of the expression by Rabbi Yechelam and Zakai? And why, does he, why are these words even necessary? You'd give them with the beer bazaar. And Rashi, the Rebbe is now going to introduce a fascinating idea, which, I believe, which the Rebbe says himself, Al-Darach doesn't actually pan out. Well, Al-Darach Pshat, he makes a point. He says, why are we adding on to the price uh, by, by the shoyer, because of bitul malacha. Why isn't the bitul malacha included in the keren? When, when, when you're paying the damages for the theft, why is the fact that the shoyer couldn't work not included in that? And he says, and he says, al pi apshat, that is included. When we say bitul malacha, we're not talking about the bitul malacha of the shoyer. We're talking about bitul malacha of the person. The fact that the person couldn't work, that is that is degrading. To the person, or, de- or, or or detrimental to the person, and we're paying extra because the person couldn't work. Let's see that inside. Late in Derech Apshat, and I notice Apshat is emphasized here. He says in the order that Alerach Alocha, this is not actually accurate. I mean to say that the 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 Bittul Melacha that we're talking about is is in the is in the Chamisha and not in the Keren. But I'm jumping at myself. It would make sense to say that the lack, the, the lack of profit that the person had, the loss of profit, should be part of the principal payment of the theft. Just like if you hurt a person, you have to pay him disability, Similarly, if you steal a tool that a person needs to do his job, you have to pay. You have to pay for the for the loss of profit that he had because he couldn't use his tool. He has no need to repeat this by the theft out of this is because it's the same thing as before. This wouldn't apply just to the ox. Where his profit comes from working the ox and plowing the ox. Also by the sheep, the person has to pay for the loss of profit. For example, he could have sold the, wheat, the, the wool that grew on the sheep. And if he couldn't do it, or, he, or then, then the Ganev caused him extra loss. And the Ganev has to pay for that. So we're not upping the price because of the loss of profits. That the guy, that the nigna, that the victim had because of the theft, because that's included in the principal loss. The uf to do is what are we talking about over here? As to libdemvas is felt and balashel the inyan for malacha. The fact that the owner of the ox could not engage in work nidlays the revach tefun. The whole concept of work, not the profit from the work. No, the etzem malacha, but ensure the very fact that he couldn't go to work. The Ganev now has to pay, the thief has to pay the value of the entire ox just because of the fact that the, that the, 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 uh, the owner was not able to go to work because of that. In other words, the very fact, I don't know if it's boredom or if it's, if it's, if it's degrading or if it's what it is, but, it's, but it's, it, it's something that was hurtful to the owner that he couldn't work. And therefore, the, the thief is charged an extra time, va- the value of the ox. And therefore, the mayor has to say, come and see the value of work. This explains this incredible chiddush. This in, this revolutionary idea as the gan of their patzol noch in mol tashlumin kolasher that the gan has to pay a whole nother value of the ox chotzer etshem patzol for in gans and hefs of avalabais even though he already compensated the entire loss of the owner karevul dimelia menias sarevach and bittul malacha including the loss of profits from the owner from not being able to work with his share. We're talking about the importance of work. Work is so great and so important, so vital that because of the fact that the Balasher, that the owner of the ox was not able to work, the Ganav has to pay a whole other value of the ox. So the, state, the, the introduction is very important because otherwise you would wonder why are you charging him so much more because of the fact 
fact that the, 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 the guy sat bored, maybe he was happy to be on vacation. But koicha shomalacha is very, very important. Work is very, very important to the point that if you, uh, if you withheld the, the bala shoyer, the owner of the ox from going to work, this costs you an entire value of the shoyer. And again, there's a Talmud Mamulach that's going to be troubled by this. And this is going to be answered with the name of Rebbe Meir. A Talmud Mamulach and Abed Rav Regen. The seasoned student is going to ask the question. Does Ton Malacha mit Asher farnet as man mood b'yoyser? Working with the ox is a minimal amount of time. Say the Gabi Nebala Bayis. And Mekoshke Mechai Asher. Both with regards to the owner. And especially in the context of the life of the ox. First of all, Zman Kharisha is l'chala yeser tzvei tzayit nayor. The whole opportunity to plow is at most... Two seasons during the year. And also there's only a few hours a day that the ox plows. Another question that the Talmud Mamulach, the seasoned student, is asking. The, 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 the knas, the fine of paying five, is in the case of when he slaughtered the animal. Slaughtering is even mentioned in the Torah before selling. If the thief Slaughtered the animal is caught of lemer as the shir is nitroy It's it, 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 it's probable that the ox was not capable for plowing or the malacha or any kind of work. Liridia is Aramaic for plowing. Well, Anders Walterim Gehalten. If if the ox was 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 capable of work, he would have held. He would have kept it for work. Or the farkeif lemalacha or sold it for work. Is so we're talking about an ox that was at a point that couldn't really work anymore. And the only its, it, its greatest value was in slaughtering it. So there's no major lack of work over here. First of all, b'chlal, in general, a share doesn't work that much. And even if it does work, this share is the kind of share that's being slaughtered because it seems to be beyond work. And therefore, Rashi brings the name of Meir. Meir is following his approach that we are concerned about the minor amount by the minute amount of cases. I'm not going to go into the Gemara over there, but to explain the idea of Chashin and Lemiyuta, Meir holds that we institute certain prohibitions. Even though in most cases there's no problem with this specific issue, but since in a minute amount of cases this might lead to something worse, therefore we asset it, we prohibit it in all cases. Again, we prohibit something in all the cases because in a minute amount of them it might lead to something prohibited. So similarly over here, when the fire is the Teira Cheshesh, for the Miut von Shvarim was Meshecht. Therefore, the Teira is concerned about the small amount, the minute amount of axes that are being slaughtered. Need cook in the Kavdem was a Roy Le Miut Malacha. So answers both questions. Just because in some cases, um, uh, in most cases, the, 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 the slaughtered animals don't have no, don't, are, are not going to do much work. But there are some slaughtered animals that would be able to work. And just because even when they're not being slaughtered, they do, they do a little bit of work. But even the little bit of work that they do, Chayshin and Lemiyuta, we are concerned about it. And therefore, Taka, you're right that it's a very small amount of work. But Reb Meir, who is Chayshin and Lemiyuta, who is concerned about the minute amount of cases, is going to be concerned over here that the person couldn't work. And therefore, in all the cases of 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 of, of, Mechari, of a shoyer, the mayor charges the guy an extra an extra round, an extra value of the shoyer. So now, in the last few ACs, Zayin Ches Tes Yud Yudalev Til Yudalid, we now got a much deeper understanding of the Machlekes with Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yechonim and Zakai. That Rabbi Yechonim and Zakai, not only he's looking at the Ganev, and, and, and he's looking, and Rabbi Meir is looking at the Nignev, but Rabbi Yechonim and Zakai, his main issue is Kavad Abris. And therefore, although he starts the price at five, when, when there's a Kavad Abris, even though there's a small amount of Bizoyin, a small amount of lack of Kavad Abris, Rabbi, Meir, uh, Rabbi Yechonim gives him a massive Discount and Rabbi Meir is someone who focuses on Kaycha Shomalacha and he's Chayshin on Lemiyuta. He's worried about even the small amount of Malacha that gets missed out in this small amount of cases, and therefore he always gives a huge 
extra charge in the case of Bittal Malacha because Reb Meir holds that, that, that Malacha is very, very important. And even if there's only a small amount of Bittal Malacha, it's still very, very important. Now we're going to go into the Pnimi Yisatayra and we're going to focus on the three psukim that Rabbi Yechonim and Zakai mentions with regards to the Ganev who is not afraid of Hashem. Tesvav. In the Eben der Montes, if a member is from Rechel and Zakai in the mayor, in the early and above mentioned statements of Rechel and Zakai, but again, as Achmed the Torah began with the Gazan, with the fact that the Torah is more stringent with a thief than it is with a robber, is Eich Dan in Lapik Pnimi Zatayda. We could uh, understand this according to Chassidus, according to Pnimi Zatayda. Avdem was a Ganav kib Yachal Asa Ayin Shel Matak Yilu Einerei. The fact that the Ganav sees or makes as if the eye of Hashem down below cannot see. He brings three psukim. The first one is from Yeshaya. Hashem last year Woe to those that go deep to hide their counsel from Hashem, their ideas from Hashem, and they do their work in the dark. Then the second pasuk he brings us on Tehillim. They say that Hashem can see, and the, the God of Yaakov. Cannot understand. Uchsiv, the third pasuk is from Yecheskel. Ki amru azar vayis aris. They say Hashem has forsaken the land. Ve'ein Hashem reya and Hashem can't see. Shtel tzich tifragas. So we have two questions. Alevas is machriach harab bering him psukim. Why does he need psukim in the first place? The harb kait v'na asa ayin chulu zasvara psuto b'yeser. The severity of, of of saying that Hashem can't see you, can't see us still, is a very simple thing. Why does he need three psukim to prove it? Beis u'befrad dray psukim. Why does it need three psukim? So why, why does it have to bring any psukim? Why does it have to bring three psukim? Gimel shini Why does he 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 shuffle the order? The pasuk from Yecheskel, not the pasuk from Tilim. The order of the psukim should have been Yeshaya, Yecheskel, then Tilim, which is the order of Tanakh. Why does it bring the Tilim pasuk before the pasuk from Yecheskel? Is it inyan bazet? And the explanation is as follows. The Retzich Toch Vegen Azan is a beautiful, beautiful paragraph where we're taking this Ganev and we're lifting him up. We, uh, although he is pretending, you know, or, or although he says Hashem can't see us, but nevertheless, the foundation of this person is a good one. This Yid believes that there's an eye above. He believes that there's an Ebishter. But the Yid makes as if the Ebishter can't see him. So the question is asked, how does a person who believes in Hashem reach such a a a a, a uh, such an odd, uh, uh, such a, an odd mistake to say that Hashem can't see. Of them bring Rabbi Yechonam Mezakeh three psukim. Therefore, Rabbi Yechonam Mezakeh brings three psukim. But the meat provides to them say that I needed for Naganov. This shows the evolutionary plunge of the Ganov. How he falls, he devolves lower and lower. The erster pasuk hoya mamikim ba Hashem lasted eitzah v'hoya b'machshach maseim. The, the, the woe to those who are hiding from Hashem, going deep from Hashem to hide their their counsel and they do in the dark. To say sagamas are veis as dar that ayin vazet. Even though he, he believes, he knows that there's an eye that sees. Aber enartzich, he fools himself, and, and he adds in the parentheses. Vibal das melamaylot and bashaf and erik edem is all zen. Hot asuf kiton umet tumas ayin nirei as nor vences lichtik. Aber nitn the matzav mechshach. He tells himself Hashem created light. So Hashem created the world in a way that when it's light, you can see. And when it's dark, you can't see. So he says, when, when I'm in the dark, when I'm stealing in the dark, Hashem can't see me. So a person who believes in Hashem, believes that Hashem could see, but comes to this mistaken conclusion that Hashem cannot see him in the dark. How does, a, how does such a, 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 a silly thought fall into this person's mind to differentiate between dark and light in this world by the Abishter's eye. It originates from an earlier mistake that he made, which is ungedited in Satan Pasuk, which is signified in the second Pasuk. He says Hashem can't see down here. Hashem is so to speak, so great as a He does not lower himself into this world and does not have any physical vision. Ermeint, the person says or thinks, as Bechdeitz is then Gashmius, in order for the person to see physicality, Muzain the Islapsis and the Nine Gashmis. You have to have a physical eye. 
When the Rebbe says, the Rebbe has no body and therefore has no physical eyes, he's a chas shalom that begets as an animal So therefore, he's not capable of seeing anything in this world. So at the bottom of the of the of the of the of the, of the pole, he's saying that the Abister can't see in the dark. Why does he say the Abister can't see in the dark? Because he thinks that the Abister doesn't see physical things. How did he end up with this mistake? The Pasuk itself says, the Abister is the one who created the ear. How could you say that he can't hear? The Abister created the eye. How could you say that he can't see? If the Abyssal could create physical eyes, certainly he could have physical vision. He, he, he thinks that the is too, the world is too low for the Abyssal to be in this world. The Abyssal is exalted upon all the na- above all the nations. So therefore he says Hashem has forsaken this world. He created it and he left. Hashem doesn't see in this world. So he's going to say it soon, the way the Yitzhara comes to you. But just to summarize the last three things. It starts out, Abish says, very high Abish says. The Abish is not in this world. He's beyond, he's beyond this world. Then that leads you to say that even when the Abish does come, come into this world, he still can't see in this world because he doesn't have an eye. And that leads you to say that even if the Abish could see in this world, he can't see if it's dark. You can only see if it's light. So Rabbi Yechon and Zakeh is giving us three psukim to explain to us how is it possible for a person to reach a point in his life where he believes that the Abister exists and he believes that Hashem can't see him still. When does his Eich was Rabbi Meir, his Benam is in Zayim Mashal. We also see this in Rabbi Meir. This was Rabbi Yechon and Zakeh. Also in Rabbi Meir we see an allusion to this concept. As a Gandhi is bedugma von einem was li zimen is bnei melech because he uses the marshal of a Gandhi is someone that did not invite the sons of the king. A rechent as a rotsu tamit li zimen is bnei melech. He thinks he's dealing with the children of the king, the sons of the king. Unit mit melech alein. A tracht as a rebis to mitzaz ein greisket ibi gem den agus elam the end from the mutzayim v'cholu. He thinks that the Abister is so great that he therefore handed over the control of the world to intermediaries, B'nai Amelech, the sons of the king. So he's making the same mistake as, as the as the Bechel Mazak is talking about. They're, they're, if you remember, they're, they're, they're both talking about the same Ganav. So he's saying the fact that the Ganav it, it, it thinks that he's dealing with B'nai Amelech and not the Melech himself is the origin of his mistake. He thinks that the Abyssar is gone, as of I saw it, and in this world all we have are the intermediaries between the Abyssar and this world, and therefore he thinks, I could not invite, I could, I could not invite or not respect in the Nimshul the Bnei HaMelech because they're, they're just intermediaries, and the Abyssar himself is not here. We're going to basically repeat this, but now in, in the Eistis of Aved, of the person, how he's how the how the eight sa'ada interacts with him. When does I and the dry fanim zelamata mizavid eight sa'ada come to I and eaten to merit the mekadosh baruch. These are the three uh, approaches, one lower than the next, that the eight sa'ada, the evil inclination, uses to convince the person to rebel against Hashem. The day after Eifim was Eiz was a reti mine as other eight sa'adas. The day after Eiz Mirayim from Velti comes and says Hashem has forsaken this world, this land. The day after is exalted. Above the world, Allah Shemayim Kivayde. The Abish says, "Glory is in the heavens." When they're gefin sechnit in the Mazai Gashmi, the Abish says, "Not even here." But maybe they can't tetan kechol elal ruchacha, and therefore you could do whatever you want. That's the first step. The Yitzhar is a bezechnit mistapik medamalein. The Yitzhar does not suffice for this. Vel dos is dachnit kinem es meridin Abish. This is not a true rebellion in Hashem. Er zokt as the Abish are gefin sechnit in velt. He's saying that the Abishter is not in this world. Rather, I nochmer as Layidaka. So the Yitzhara therefore comes with another point. The Abishter can't see. The Abishter is giving Zichtake Yein Welt. The Abishter is in this world. He created the world. He does not look out, he does not supervise on the, on the deeds of the dwellers of this world. Because they're not important to him. So step number one is he says, the Abyssal is not here. 
Step number two is the Abishar is here, but the Abishar doesn't care about the about the, 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 the creations of this world. This is not a true rebellion. He's still lifting up the Abishter. He's still respecting the Abishter to a certain result. He's saying the Abishter is seeing vision does not come down into physical things because the Abishter is so lofty. So therefore the Yitzhara comes with a third thing. As the Emma said, the Abister Echin Yanam Gashmi. That the Abister could see physical things. Nor is his Achilic Tishin Eirun Cheshach. But he differentiates between light and dark. In Yon von Eirun Tusha said the Abister. If it's something of light and holiness, the Abister could see. Because it matters to him. It's relevant to him. Over Taina the Yitzhara, the Yitzhara claims, Vosfar an Or Tautes. As the Abister is also Tsukukun to Yonam von Cheshach and Echin Tishin. How can you say that the Abishter is looking at things that are unholy or things that are dark? So therefore, after you accept that the Abishter is in this world, the Abishter could see, the Yitzhahara tries to convince someone that the Abishter look, does not see when you do something bad. When you engage in unholiness, the Abishter can't see. And once you make this differentiation on a spiritual level and holiness he could see and unholiness he can see this then trickles down as the ganiv macht the thief differentiates in the physical sense as the abister cannot see when something is in the dark if you turn the light off Hashem can see if you turn the light is on Hashem could see but, but if I turn the light off then Hashem can see ha you can only get there once you, you, you believe that the Abishter, by the Abishter, there's a difference of light and dark. And you can only get there when you believe that the Abishter it doesn't care about this world. And you can only get there when you believe that the Abishter is too high for this world. But when you understand that the, this world is a dina betachta inu, this world is ikir shechina betachta inu maisa, this is where the Abishter wants to be. And every prat to prat is negeya. He, to the Abishter in this world. And good and bad, everything is, 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 is important to the Abishter. Then your conduct will be becoming, will be appropriate, because the Abishter is right here. Let's conclude with one more detail by using the muscle of Reb Meir. As he compares this, this, this stealing to a party, to a feast. Remeir is talking about a time after the Ghana was caught. And the Ghana was brought to Bezden. Which then he already regrets the Gneva. He already discussed this since if you he already regrets it and he knows he's gonna pay for it big time. So he's holding in a place where the sitrachra, where the negative was subdued. This becomes a delicacy. A celebration, a feast of the Abishter. Father the Abishter. The Alter Rebbe in Tanya. The Alter Rebbe explains in Tanya that when you take meriru lemiska, when you take something that's bitter and you and you and you transform it into something that's sweet, that is a delicacy, a sweet and sour delicacy for the Abishter. When Adar Rebbe Davpet of them even from Atamim, specifically when you engage in this type of delicacy, then the Gam Rasha liyemira that you take a Rasha. On, on the day of wickedness, and he transforms his wickedness into day and into light above. Is the other gaydel nachas ruach lefan v'isbarach? This is the greatest nachas to the Eibster. So, so we, we, since we're talking about the Eitzahara over here, we're talking about the person that started out thinking that b'mechshach that the Eibster doesn't see him in the dark, and now we fast forward to a time that he got caught and he did chara, he had charot, he had he regretted his his deeds. And he does tshuva, so he's transforming his negative ways into, into, into positive ways. He's subduing the evil. This is a mishta. This is a party for the Abishter. This is delicacies, which the Abishter celebrates with. And when we make this kind of party for Hashem, this kind of feast for Hashem, we prepare these types of delicacies for the Abishter, that we don't listen to the Yitzhahara, and we subdue the evil, and we transform it into something good. Through subduing the evil, we then merit the ultimate party, the ultimate feast, which will be done with the Livyasan, with the coming of Mashiach, may it be the of Mamish.